What's good, YouTube? It's your boy OGT Man, and today we got um, the most offensive advertisement ever made by Sunny V2. The link will be in the description. I got the thumbnail from his video, and I will be getting thumbnails from everybody's videos just so y'all know who made them and where I'm actually watching it from. So, without that being said, for all those people who be in the comments, Oh, you don't make it on the thumbnail. Oh, you being late. You got damn right. You got damn right. I'm tired. I be tired. But um, without that being said, let's get straight into the video. Make sure to subscribe to him. Posted this three days ago. Let's get it. Would you fly on in for a September 11 deal? What about no. some cereal to cope with the Boston Marathon bombing? These are the most Damn. offensive ad campaigns ever. In 2011, Mexican restaurant Hacienda rented this specific billboard on which they'd referenced the Jonestown Massacre, where cult leader Jim Jones had killed his entire following by spiking their Kool-Aid with poison. So what did the restaurant's Damn. billboard say? We're like a cult with better Kool-Aid and their drinks were apparently to die for us I ended well, drinks were to die for huh this video already pissed me off VP of sales and marketing explained, our role is not to be controversial or even edgy. We want to be noticed and there's a difference. We have a responsibility to advertise with care and that's why we're pulling this ad. We made a mistake and don't want to have a negative image in the community, yet this wouldn't be their last controversial billboard. Five years later in 2016, the restaurant made another reading, the best Mexican food this side of the wall, which quickly went viral on Reddit sparking outrage. Really disappointed how Sienda continues to push past what is acceptable for advertising. Not a fan of most of their billboards, but this is just too much. Hashtag take it down. Others showed their support in comments such as this one. Yet unlike their previous billboard, Hacienda says it has no plans to apologize for or remove the ads. Their vice president explained, We don't intend to upset anybody, but we do use humor. And Lee's discount liquor applied a similar strategy. Alcohol, it's cheaper than therapy. If alcohol wow. is not the answer, change the question. You look like I need a drink, and perhaps so did the people who tried to get the billboards banned. Take down billboards stating Lee's Liquor is cheaper than therapy. The owners of Lee's Liquor has failed to remember the implications of alcohol regarding DUIs, broken families, and when people commit manslaughter. Lee's Liquor owners think this is funny? Take this billboard down. No, I ain't gonna lie. These first two, it's like, what the fuck? I can only imagine the... the once they're getting closer to the end of the video, my nigga, like, what? It's cheaper than, cheaper than th therapy? And it's actually, no, nah, let me keep going. I ain't gonna say too much. Various comments agreed, such as, this is irresponsible advertising. You can sell alcohol without crossing this boundary, whereas the humor was liked by others. Hey dude, get a life. It's a very funny sign. I wish we had more signs in Vegas like this. If you don't like the billboard, go back to Utah. Lee's Discount Liquor ran their own billboard controversy poll, which found that 77.2% of people called the ad clever and not offensive, yet this didn't stop a mandate to take the billboard down. Even worse was a business card shared to Reddit reading, Are you an alcoholic? We can help. Although they weren't offering counseling, but rather an alcohol delivery service. In all seriousness, I assume it's just a bad translation. I meant, do you enjoy alcohol? We can help. But yeah, really should have run that by a native speaker first. In that very same year, British supermarket Tesco found themselves in the infamous horse meat scandal, where one of their burgers was found containing 29% horse meat. Well, 
only two days after the scandal broke, Tesco tweeted its sleepy time so we're off to hit the hay. See you at 8am for more Tesco tweets. And the replies weren't too pretty. You're hitting the hay? Well, I suppose the poor horses don't need it anymore. Maybe hitting the hay wasn't the best choice of words right now. Plenty of room on the hay now that we've eaten all the horses. Tesco responded by tweeting, I'm terribly sorry. That tweet was scheduled before we knew of the current situation. We never intend to make light of it. And in case this wasn't bad enough, Tesco then had to scrap a segment of its latest advert as it was due to include images of a horse. The horse was apparently said to be used in a humorous context. But while Tesco was simply a victim of bad timing, recipe website Epicurious was a victim of bad thinking. Because after the Boston Marathon bombing, they'd post two insane tweets. In honor of Boston and New England, may we suggest whole grain cranberry scones. Boston, our hearts are with you. Here's a bowl of breakfast energy we could all use to start today. The tweets were quickly shared to a media training website which wrote, get your legs blown off by a terrorist, try these scones. Lose a cherished friend, maybe this bowl of breakfast energy can help. Which then turned into articles by Mashed and Business Insider, as Epicurious was labeled by the public, morons, idiots, dickheads, and pathetic. The company responded with a copy and paste apology, leading to more criticism reading, a repeatedly tweeted template apology isn't genuine. It's a form letter. The steady stream of identical tweets does nothing to engage with the audience and express human remorse, but were Epicurious's tweets as bad as Kenneth Cole's. Millions are in uproar in Cairo. Rumor is they heard our new spring collection is now available online, although the uproar had actually come from protests in Egypt, where 846 people were killed. Kenneth Cole- 846? Damn. That's how you know I don't be listening to the news. Where, 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 where this all be at? Do, do this be on Channel 5, dude? I'm sorry, y'all. This, this is my OCD. I, I keep thinking this camera dirty, when all actuality is just my face. Oh, no. It's just my face. Let's keep going, dude apologized before making the same mistake only two years later. In response to the Syrian civil war hit tweet, boots on the ground or not, let's not forget about sandals, pumps and loafers sneakily advertising his new line of shoes. On a public billboard Kenneth mocked the Hudson River crash landing, but at least he had the decency to avoid September 11, unlike this TV commercial by the Worldwide Nature Fund. It began by explaining in 2001, one of the worst tragedies in the history of humanity killed 2,819 people before showing a bunch of other planes to articulate that in 2005 the tsunami killed 280,000 people. That's a hundred times more deaths. The message of the ad was that our planet is brutally powerful, yet it felt like they were minimizing the severity of 9-11 to highlight a natural disaster that couldn't have been avoided. Not only is the message offensive, but it's scientifically flawed. All the carbon reductions and recycling in the world won't prevent tsunamis. Advertising double fail. The commercial was so offensive that WWF tried to claim it did not authorize its production or publication, yet there was another 9-11 ad that was somehow even worse. It began to circulate in September 2013 and showed a man flying toward two foot-long subs, which you could buy for a price of $9.11. Now you know you dead fucking wrong for that. Really? September 11, two foot longs for $9.11. Which, ooh, two of them standing right next to each other. Y'all some nasty, y'all some fucked up people. It was captioned with two pieces of text. Fly on in for September 11th, and you will never forget this deal. But was the ad actually legitimate? Well, no. It was the work of satirical news site The Onion, which wrote from the structural steel melt on Tower 7 grain bread to the Twin Chowers cold cut combo with ground zero car vinaigrette on Let's Whole Wheat Roll, we've got something for everybody this September 11. Despite clearly being a joke, a man named Travis tried to cash in on the deal, printing the ad to bring to his local subway, which they unbelievably accepted. Is that a good coupon or no? 
It's a good coupon? It's good? Okay. He and his friend were totally baffled. Dude, I can't believe they did that, dude. Even showing their receipt to prove they hadn't lied. If the coupon itself wasn't hilarious enough, the fact that Subway accepted it as a legitimate coupon had me rolling on the floor. Subway, however, wasn't impressed. Like everyone, we are deeply offended by the fake story and ad created by The Onion. The story received coverage in a Sydney Morning Herald article, which highlighted another 9-11 deal that was instead completely genuine. The now-closed Tumbledown Trails Golf Club in Wisconsin posted this newspaper ad reading 12th anniversary of 9-11. To commemorate this, we are offering 9 holes with cart for only $9.11 per person, or 18 holes with cart for only $19.11. The owner of the course said the golf club began the promotion two years ago on the 10th anniversary anniversary of the attacks, and until now it had been warmly received as a way to ensure people never forgot the tragedy. It therefore add we're a little hurt by the fact that people are putting such a negative context on this. I thought people would appreciate it. It seemed the owner at least had some good intentions, although so did these three companies when they used hashtags incredibly wrong. Sweets company Entenmann's wrote, who's not guilty about eating all the tasty treats they want without realizing not guilty was trending due to Casey Anthony's trial for the murder of her baby. They'd respond by tweeting, Sorry everyone, we weren't trying to reference the trial in our tweet. We should have checked the trending hashtag first. Fashion brand Celeb Boutique wrote, Hashtag Aurora is trending. Clearly about our Kim K inspired Aurora dress, although this wasn't exactly true. The hashtag was trending due to the Batman movie theater shooting, which killed 12 people in Aurora, Colorado. We are incredibly sorry for our tweet about Aurora. Our PR is not US based and did not check the reason for the trend. At that time, our social media was totally unaware of the situation and simply thought it was another trending topic. We have removed the very insensitive tweet and will of course take more care in the future to look into what we say in our tweets. Then there was DiGiorno's Pizza who wrote, Hashtag why I stayed, you had pizza, which was a hashtag started by women explaining why they stayed in abuse relationships. Unsurprisingly, the company then tweeted a million apologies, did not read what the hashtag was about before posting, and to their credit, they spent the entire day responding to every complaint authentically. All social media experts, please take a lesson from DG Auto Pizza. When you step in it, you give real apologies and not excuses. Good job. However, home... See, now that just made me cry. Oh. Mmm. This video got me emotional. Oh, this is so fucked up. Oh, never got the memo, as they do the exact opposite. After posting a tweet which produced the article, Home Depot apologizes for racist game day tweet, terminates agency responsible. So what did the tweet say? Which drummer is not like the others, attaching a photo that showed black people next to a monkey? You could argue it wasn't that bad given it said, which drummer is not like the others, although it's hard to know what Nivea was thinking when headlining an ad with the words, white is purity. The campaign was so wild, people didn't believe it was real, although others tried to argue that the world was overreacting. Is the US so obsessed with race now that the first thing Americans think when they read white isn't the color but race? People, stop seeing everything with identity politics tinted glasses. Then there was this ad by Big Pens reading, look like a girl, act like a lady, think like a man, work like a boss, which was hilariously designed to celebrate Women's Day. People didn't appreciate it. If it's quite alright with you, Bic, I'll look like a woman, act like a woman, think like a woman, and work like a woman, and you can F right off like an idiot. To make matters worse, Bic had launched the Bic for her pen range three years prior, which had already been slammed as sexist. And they're just like regular pens, except they're pink, so they cost twice as much. <laughs> That is absolutely true as well. Well, at last, pens for us ladies to use. Now all we need is for her paper, and I can finally learn to write. I was so disappointed to find that only one fifth of the pens I received were pink. Or maybe more, I can't do maths. These pens fit perfect in my hands. But hubby feels they are unnecessary since he writes all the checks. I'd explain more, but I have to go make him a sa- No, these ads was fucking wild, bro. Wow. What do y'all be thinking when y'all make these shits, bro? Like, literally. Like, y'all need to do better. Do what the journal did. Look at these comments. 
Best Mexican food on this side of the wall is the funniest ad I've ever seen. At first it had me laughing, but then I was like, wow. It seems that September is a tower and next ample fantastic advertising. Y'all are fucking funny, bro. But really, like, seem like people sit on Twitter all day and want to be offended about everything. I guess you can say that. But anyways, it's your boy OGT Man signing out. Yee-dee.